In Teeth with Gross Decay, you're often dancing close to the pulp. In this case example, you're going to learn about how to apply bioceramics during a carious pulp exposure. Hey, it's Ash Mark here from All Things Dentistry, where we share all those unwritten tips and hints to better your dental practice. And if you're new here, make sure to click on that subscribe button. All the things that I've listed in the video are going to be listed in the description box below and stick around to the end of the video for my top three tips before initiating a case like this. Let's jump into it. So here's the decay on the lower right molar of this eight year old boy. It's pretty huge and interesting it's isolated only to this, this tooth. Taking a look at the radiographs you can see the extent of the decay and it's fairly significant. It extends into the pulp chamber and you know what, incredibly he's asymptomatic. He only has cold sensitivity during things like ice cream. And if we look at his apices, they're not completely formed yet. And depending on the diagnosis of the tooth after examination, this actually will influence the treatment of choice. I just wanted to share another case with you, and this is a nine-year-old boy that I treated approximately a year ago with a very similar presentation. And the caries extends into the pulp chamber. We removed the decay and placed a direct pulp cap with bioceramic IRRM. Here's the three-month recall, and you can see that the beginnings of a dentin bridge. You know, like, that's the beauty of kids. They heal like crazy. And when I was recording this video, I just reviewed that. I remember looking at that premolar thinking, hey, that might actually have a couple of roots on it. Part of the examination process includes a cold test. This is a critical test and it helps you determine the next step. You know, if the tooth didn't respond to cold and our diagnosis was necrotic, then a regeneration process may be initiated. This little guy responded to cold, so we we're able to go with caries removal and the planned pulp capping. So we diagnosed this tooth with number four, six, asymptomatic irreversible pulpitis with normal apical tissues. And this little guy was just amazing. No sedation required, no nitrous, just local anesthesia. And you know, just to make sure we weren't gonna experience any problems during the procedure, I cold tested just before we got started, after anesthesia. You know, I really can't stress how important it is to have a treatment plan and diagnosis established before treating the tooth. And you know, had the patient presented with symptoms, my treatment plan may have changed from vital pulp therapy to regeneration to apexogenesis. I find that constant communication with the mother helped to relieve any of her fears. You know, by the way, she's actually watching in real time the video feed from my microscope. She's pretty funny, so you might hear her cracking jokes and laughing. So once we remove most of the gross infected dentin, I'm gonna remove the remaining infected dentin, and that's not affected, with a spoon excavator. We're expecting to hit a pulp horn, so I'm, I'm planning on that, and so is everyone in the room. According to the literature, the best results come from disinfecting the area with sodium hypochlorite, which also helps to control hemostasis. In this case, it wasn't significant hemorrhage, so that doesn't play a factor in this case. You can see here that we have two pulp exposures and also blushing of the pulp, indicating that we're super close to the pulp chamber. I elected to place root repair material from Brassler all over the pulp floor just to promote more dentin bridging from the rest of the pulp. I'd honestly rather have that against the tubules than a resin modified glass ion or, or restorative material like composite. The root repair material is a very simple material to use. The consistency is like soft ice cream and I use BC Sealer, the sister product for three years now and I absolutely love it. I've had amazing results with it with my endos and this material I've used before and it's, I can't say enough about it. This is from Brasser's website and the, here's the product here. From my understanding, Brassler has a distribution rights in North America, but it's actually called iRoot and is distributed as iRoot in other countries. Biodentine is another option that I've not had any experience with and the literature does note good outcomes with it as well. You know, the thing is like materials will change throughout time and a quick Google Scholar review can help you decide what product to use for these types of procedures. Because this patient lives approximately an hour away, I elected to use a resin modified glass ionomer such as Fuji 2 as a base and then cover it with a composite restoration. Resin modified glass ionomer chemically bonds to tooth structure and I'm really looking to make a super seal to ensure that no bacteria make their way into this healing pulp. And we're just finishing up the composite restoration and voila, we're done. One note about calcium hydroxide and that's really what I've been trained with. This review by Cadeth looked at studies including MTA and comparing it to calcium hydroxide and it generally found that for direct pulp capping and partial pulpotomies, MTA was more successful than calcium hydroxide, demonstrating either a lower failure rate or a higher survival rate. Let's take a look at the top three tips before starting cases like these. 
Check probing depths. This is a critical step that can help prevent you from starting treatment, as in cases with a fractured root. This case had a single deep probing depth and the patient was informed that the prognosis is significantly reduced for saving this tooth. If you suspect a cracked tooth, transilluminate it with the fiber optic end of the handpiece. This will help you determine if the tooth is cracked because cracked teeth will have a wild range of symptoms. A cracked tooth will also not permit the light to go past the crack, but if the tooth doesn't have a crack, the light will shine right through. And finally, cold test before starting. We've all initiated cases and had to stop because the tooth was not 100% numb. By checking with a cold test before you get started, you'll increase your confidence and your patient's confidence that they will not feel any pain. If you found this video helpful, we really appreciate a share, thumbs up, or a comment. I'll see you soon.